Hi, I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio and welcome to Fabulous Feasts. Fabulous Feasts is all about how you can think of food as a way to improve your health if it's not as good as you'd like it to be, or if you want to maintain your health, or if you want to recover quicker from your workouts or improve your performance. Yes, Health is related to the food, and what you choose to eat is directly related to your health, wellness, and your overall quality of life. We know that food can drive inflammation in your body, but food can also suppress inflammation in your body. So our job here, my goal for you is to expose you to different food pairings that you may not have thought of before, to remind you that you are what you eat as well as you are what you eat eats. So you need to think about what you're eating because it's directly related to your health. It was Hippocrates who said, let medicine be thy food and let food be thy medicine. Well, that's what Fabulous Feast is all about, is using food to help you maintain and regain your health if you need to. Today's show, it's all about the egg. And I'm going to date myself and I'm going to use the term the incredible edible egg, if anybody remembers that advertisement from years ago. And we're going to talk about what it is that makes an egg so powerful. It really is an excellent source of nutrition and protein and fat as well. That's right. Eggs are actually good for you. And we're going to talk about all the different types of eggs are out there so you can become a better informed consumer. The choices or the meal prep today is going to be a custard, a little on the savory side, but a baked coconut custard. Uh, and then we're also going to do a frittata with asparagus and sun-dried tomatoes with egg whites. So a little twist on that as well. And finally, we'll finish up with some egg meal prep ideas. Since the custard's going to take a little bit of time, let's get started with that first. And then while that's cooking, we'll do the frittata and everything will be done at the same time. So custard, we're going to need six eggs. Now, egg yolks I like to use because I want the richness of the egg yolk. Now, what's in an egg yolk? Well, an egg yolk is where all your vitamins and minerals, your selenium, your vitamin A, your, all your B vitamins are in the yolk. So the yolk is nutrient dense. The yolk of a normal egg does have 213 milligrams of cholesterol approximately. But guess what, people? We've known for over 20 years that dietary cholesterol, what you ingest, is not related to systemic cholesterol, what's in your blood only 10 to 15 percent relationship between the two. So don't worry about dietary cholesterol if you're eating good fats. If you're eating some dietary cholesterol but you're also eating a lot of saturated fats, a lot of fried foods, a lot of hydrogenated fats, peanut oil, corn oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, deep fried foods, those are all saturated fats. Those in combination with white sugar, a high glycemic index, that is what's going to give you a lot of cholesterol. That's what's going to give you hardening of the arteries. That's what's going to give you atherosclerosis. It's not the egg. It's the other stuff. It's the saturated fats and especially when it's combined with sugary foods. Because when you combine saturated fats with sugary foods, it creates something called an AGE, an active glycolated end product. <laughs> what does that mean? It means it's a protein that, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a combination that binds that sugary fat, the sugar and the fat bind to proteins, and it makes those proteins excited. It changes them. It converts them. It makes them almost like free radicals. And now they start to act in an inflammatory manner. They start to act in a different manner. So if those fats and sugars bind to the proteins in your brain and it gives you white plaques on your brain, that leads to Alzheimer's. That leads to mental decline. If those AGEs get into your pancreas, maybe that's why you're getting type 2 diabetes. If those AGEs start to 
line up along, irritate the lining of your blood vessels. It makes your cholesterol sticky. You get hardening of the arteries. So again, it's not the fat that's the problem. It's not the cholesterol rather. It's the saturated fats combined with sugar. So that's what you have to watch out for. Good fats, we're going to be using coconut milk today with all the fat. I want coconut fat because coconut fat, even though it's solid at room temperature and people go, oh, it's a saturated fat. It's solid at room temperature. It's bad. No, it's not bad because it's an omega-9 fat. It's a median chain triglyceride. It actually sustains you, helps stimulate metabolism, helps you drop weight, and does not drive bad cholesterol levels up. So coconut fat's a good fat, but we're talking about the egg today. So first thing we need to do for the custard is separate the egg yolk from the whites. So let's separate that. Now, a couple things about, there's a little bit of yolk here. We're not making meringue. So if a little bit of yolk ends up in the white, no big deal. We're going to use the white for our frittata. Let's put the yolk over here. One. Now, I have different colored eggs. Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't make a difference. This is an organic egg. So what I want to do is before I break, before I separate the yolk, sorry, before I separate the yolk, Ah, I broke it anyway. I wanted to see the color. You're going to notice the different color of the yolks of these different eggs. I mean, that one broke, but this is also a farm-raised, local farm-raised egg. And again, you'll see the different color of the yolks and the whites. This is Eglin's best egg. This is a, a designer egg, they call it, because it's fed omega-3 fatty acids, so it has a better omega-3 profile. So this is a conventional, conventional egg, all right? And you can see the yolk isn't as yellow as this one that's broken or the farm-raised this one, look how plump that yolk is, okay? Look how flat that yolk is, all right? If the, if the white's got a little grayness to it, that's okay. That means it's actually a fresh egg. Um, but that color of the yolk, those are xanthins. Those are carotenoids. They're very anti-inflammatory. So a free-ranged egg, a farm-raised egg, an egg that's allowed to eat bugs and grass is definitely a good choice. The Eglin's Best Egg, where they give them extra omega-3 fatty acid, again, it's got that extra color. So this has approximately 100 milligrams of omega-3 in it. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids are um, anti-inflammatory, so they help drive uh, or just keep inflammation down. That's why it's a good choice for inflammation as well as for nutrition. Um, but what your egg is fed makes a big difference on the quality of nutrition in there. So um, think about it. Does it have, if it's organic, that'll be better, but it definitely really should be either grass fed or enhanced with some sort of omega-3. But again, you can look how bland and, and just pale that yolk is compared to these other yolks. So, farm raised, but ask your, if you're going to get a farm raised um, egg, ask the farmer, what does he feed them? What does he give them? Are they free range? Does he give them uh, different minerals and supplements? Because they make all different types of designer eggs where they get all sorts of things in them. So you can ask those questions today. But now, Let's talk a little bit more. This one's broken, so I wanted to use just the yolk. So here's an egg. And, you know, I had some hard-boiled eggs out here. I don't know if this is hard-boiled or not. Uh, my hands are a little slimy. I'm going to wash up. So how do you tell if you got your hard-boiled eggs mixed up with your non-hard-boiled eggs? Well. You could drop it like that, but that's really not the best choice. What you can do is spin it and see 
how it spins. This guy doesn't like to spin, does it? That one likes to spin. That's hard boiled, okay? Because there's liquid in here, there's air in here, so it won't spin. So that's a real simple way for you to figure out, did you get your hard boiled eggs mixed up with your other eggs? So, and again, I cracked it, but it doesn't make a difference because it's hard boiled. So we have um, our egg yolks in here. Um, and actually, I do need one more, right? One, two, three. Yep, one more because we're going to do six egg yolks. And we're going to save the whites, like I said, for a moment. But it's really important to consider the source of your, of your food. Um, you really want to limit the amount of toxic exposure. You want to limit the amount of chemical exposure of the food because that's, it's just going to drive inflammation. And inflammation is going to cause pain and irritation. And it's going to cause disease. So let's whip up these egg yolks nicely. And then to the egg yolks, we're going to add a can of coconut milk. Whole coconut milk. I want the fat. Fat's not bad. Bad fat's bad. And what's bad fat? Saturated fat. Especially when you pair saturated fat with sugar. All right? But fat by itself, um, again, olive oil, excellent. Uh, avocado oil, excellent. Um, macadamia nut oil, walnut oil, coconut oil, all good fats. In fact, my patients that like to do the uh, modified fast, the 12 hour you know, fasting, intermittent fasting, I'll tell them to break it with a teaspoon of coconut oil first thing in the morning because that'll set your blood sugar it's a median chain triglyceride, so it helps stimulate burning of other fats. Helps almost to bring you, uh, if you're a real low carbohydrate intake person, to that ketosis state. So it can be a very effective way to jumpstart your body in the morning and to sustain you so you don't get those blood sugar crashes. That was a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And for sweetener, it's not going to be real sweet. We're just going to add a little bit of, uh, you can use honey, you can use maple syrup, or you can use a, a sugar substitute like xylitol, but we're just going to add about oh, two tablespoons of honey. That's all. Not too much. All right? Because we want on the savory side, and a pinch of salt, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So get all that mixed up, beat up really nice, because we don't want a real sugary dish. What did I just talk about? I talk about when you pair fat with sugar, it may not be a good combination. Now these are good fats, all right, except for the one conventional egg I put in there. That conventional egg had about 30 milligrams of uh, omega-3 fatty acids in it. Again, an Eglin's Best Egg has about 100 milligrams. So when you pick your eggs, not only look at how they were raised, but read the ingredients. Read the nutritional profile. Are you looking for omega-3 rich eggs? I am. So I look for those. And I want free range. I want grass-fed. If they can, if they, you know, grass-fed, meaning they can, you know, eat grass and bugs. I want that. So that's all whipped together. I'm putting it in a one bowl. You can put this in individual ramekins. All right, you can uh, use a four ounce ramekin. It'll take about five four ounce ramekins. And you gotta do it with your bain marie. So this just goes over in here. And then we take our boiled water, which I already have boiling, fill it up about halfway. Sprinkle a little bit of nutmeg over the top. That's gonna go in the oven. That takes about, when you cook the, the, the whole large one like that, it's going to take about 50 minutes to an hour. You know it's done when you do the, the knife test. When you slide a knife down the middle and it comes out clean. So a little bit of nutmeg on top. Let's slide that in and let it cook in the oven. Let's 
put it in this rack here. Good. We'll let the custard bake, um, 325 degrees. Check it in about 40 minutes. It may take about an hour. So let's get some of these egg shells out of the way here. Uh, we know this is hard boiled. Oh gosh, here's another egg. Is this a fresh egg? Is it still a you know, viable egg? Well, gee, I I'm not quite sure. Let's get these out of the way. Get the water test. Does it swim? It sinks. That's good. When an egg sinks, that means it's fresher. If it floats, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's older because uh, there's an air pocket in the, uh, in the egg and over time that air pocket increases and then it floats. So when it sinks, that means it's a fresher egg. So this is a fresher egg. Oh, and while we're talking about uh, eggs and freshness, after you hard boil your egg, if you chill it quickly, then you won't get that, that greenish film around the yolk, the sulfur uh, that forms around the yolk. That happens because the egg kept cooking for a while. You know, that, that smell of, uh, of, of, of an old bad egg is kind of sulf you know, that, that sulfur smell, that rotten egg smell. Well, that's sulfur. And when you let a hard boiled egg uh, cool slowly, some of that sulfur builds up around the outside of the yolk. So it doesn't make it bad, but if you don't want that green tint, to your egg yolks when they're hard boiled if you're putting in a dish uh, uh, like you know we're going to prep later for uh, for to-go meal cool them off you know, douse them in cold water right away as soon as they're done cooking so now we have all these egg whites what are we going to do with all these egg whites well guess what we're going to make a frittata we're going to start with a little bit of asparagus but it's going to be an egg white frittata so we take the tops of the asparagus I cut them in about half inch pieces and you can use the stalks as long as it's not in the woody portion of the stalk. Uh, let's get our flame on. Johnny, was it Johnny Quest or was that the, no, it was the flash, flame on, yeah. Let that warm up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna taste a fork, I'm just gonna loosen up. Now look, we had a casualty when we did the custard and we have an egg with a yolk here so guess what i'm going to put it in there just to use it but for the sake of argument because i don't like to waste things let's just say this is egg whites egg whites are all protein you're not getting your b vitamins you're not getting your selenium you're not getting your vitamin d you're, you're not getting your omega-3 fatty acids you're just getting protein so it's also an essential uh, protein, meaning it's a full protein, it's complete. All of your essential fatty acids are found in eggs. So if you just eat eggs, you're getting all the amino acids that you need your, to live, that your body needs to live. So the egg is actually a really good source of nutrients and food. Let's get a little olive oil, not much, in the bottom of the pan, just enough to coat it. So it's really important to eat quality foods, and it's really important that you know where your food comes from, okay? Let's get the asparagus in there first. So eating is important, but you know what else is really important? It's really important to be here. I'm cooking. I'm bent over. All day long on the computer, I'm bent over, right? Everything we do, Michelangelo, when he painted the Sistine Chapel, was like this. You, everything we do is in front of us. Gravity has a tendency to push us forward. By pushing us forward, we lose what's called that sagittal plane line. The ear gets in front of the shoulder. Your ear is supposed to be over your shoulder. When that ear goes in front of the shoulder, it creates a lot of neck problems, it creates a lot of back pain. And it's really, really important to keep the chest up and shoulders down. Because when you have poor posture, it impacts your ability to breathe, it impacts your ability to move, it impacts every other aspect of your life. And in fact, posture could even be a problem 
and your neck could be coming up from your feet even. Um, but it's, it's just really important to remember that. In fact, in the office when we talk about exercises, it's always about alignment. It's always about posture. It's always about moving better. I don't want you to just move. I don't want you to just do exercises. I want you to do it with a better mobility, with a better alignment, so that your movement patterns prevent irritation to your joints and muscles and nerves over time. So that's really important. Asparagus are going first. You know, and posture problems aren't just with your neck and upper back. It could be your lower back. You know, and that's what we talk about in the office is giving people specific exercises for their individual needs. Our egg whites over here, we're going to add some black pepper. You know, it's pretty funny. Uh, we, 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 we're going to add a little salt, too. And some Romano cheese, because this is a frittata. In the office, we, we kind of joke around that I've become the other foot doctor. Uh, because postural problems of the feet create local foot pain, like Morton's neuroma and stiff uh, big toe, hallux rigidus, and just foot pain and arch pain. But those same problems go all the way up into the knees, hips, and back. So as a chiropractic sports doctor, rehab doctor, we look at the whole kinetic chain. We look at your feet, we look at your hips, we look at your back, we look at your knees, because everything works together. You have to be able to move in good alignment from the feet all the way up to the neck and shoulders. You have to be able to do all of your daily activities like that. And then if you want to do something in a different multiplanar motion because of a sport or a hobby, that's fine but you still need to have good mechanics in everyday life. Asparagus are just about getting ready. Now I'm going to add some julienne sun-dried tomatoes with a little bit of the oil because I want that extra flavor from the sun-dried tomatoes. So let this just warm up a little bit. The sun-dried tomatoes don't need to be cooked. Just want the flavor to go through them. But yeah, it's, it's really, really important um, to be aware of your posture, not just in life, but when you work out, when you're sitting at your desk, when you're doing your everyday activities. It's all about being here, chest up, shoulders back and down. And you know, if you have a sit to stand desk, great. But you remember, you still gotta be on a soft surface. And you still got to have good shoes. You know, arch supports might be important, but arch supports aren't the answer to everything. You might just need some simple exercises. And guess what? You have nine bones in your foot, 14 in your ankle, 14 bones in your foot. They're all supposed to be freely movable, like your wrists and hands and fingers. When those joints in your feet get stiff and locked up, you not only get local pain, you not only get plantar fasciitis, you not only get Morton's neuroma, you not only get all these other Achilles tendinosis, tendinitis problems, you just don't feel well. You can't move properly. Then you start to limp. And the next thing you know, you get knee pain or hip pain. So this is looking good. All right. Now we're going to take our egg whites and just pour them across the top. All right. Right in across the top. And just give it a little bit of a swirl. Get the egg around all the corners. And just let that go. While that's going, I'm going to turn the broiler on. My, I just use my toaster oven. But you can use uh, your regular oven if you want. Because one of the cool things about a frittata, if you had the skill to put a plate on this and to flip it and to slide it back, that's old school. I've seen my aunt do it. It's pretty wild and with a much bigger frittata than this. But what works best for us novices is to let the bottom cook, then take this, slide it under the broiler for a minute, maybe two minutes, and then the top's done. So that's how you're going to be able to get that nice fluffiness a little bit of cook on the bottom, and uh, a nice uh, a texture to the top as well. So we're going to let the frittata cook a little bit. And custard's going. Everything's moving along well. Now, 
we talked about vegetation being really important. So we have a couple of vegetables in here, but along with my frittata, I'm also going to have a salad. Again? Yeah, again. I talk about salads all the time. So we're going to have a salad. This time I think I'm going to put some uh, rainbow carrots with it. Now, these happen to be organic rainbow carrots, so I've washed them, and I can make a choice on whether I want to uh, peel them or not. Um, is sometimes I like to peel them, sometimes I don't. I usually do cut the ends off of that, that I always do. Um, but isn't that cool? So beautiful. Now, for Tati, you can see it's set nicely on the bottom, but the top's still a little loose. So I just swing it over here, put it under my broiler. That'll be ready in like a minute. So um, let's shut that off. So I'm going to just, uh, just slice some of these on a bias, nice and thin. So I can get a little color, get a little crunch. Because your salad is a part of those vegetation. You got to get it in. Now let's say you're looking to go on an anti-inflammatory diet because you have some joint pain. Or, you, know, you look, there's something called waist-hip ratio. If your ratio, the measurement of inches between your waist and your hip, uh, for men it's got to be under uh, 0.85 and women it's got to be under 0.95. If that ratio is over that, you may be chronically inflamed. You may have what's called adiposopathy, okay? And if you have adiposopathy, that's inflamed body fat. Inflamed body fat stores those chemicals we were talking about in the beginning of the show, all right? And those chemicals just keep circulating in your body. What's a really good way to get rid of that is to take your vegetation, carrots, celery, spinach, romaine lettuce, and blend them up in a blender or a Nutribullet or something like that with all the fiber and drink that before every meal. That'll fill you up, number one, and that'll also help to decrease your, uh, your appetite. And the fiber is going to keep your blood sugar down, and you're not going to get those spikes. And then your body's going to start burning up its own natural calories, its excess calories, and you start to drop a little bit of weight. So I have my salad here. Now, we talked about the egg hard-boiled, it can be on its own an on-the-go meal. What's this about? 80 calories, all right? Uh, 13, 15, 14 grams of protein, good fats. You can't go wrong. Guess what? That's all it takes. The frittata's done. That's it. Look at that. Oh, man. You just slide it right out. Money. Money. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh parsley on it and just a crack of black pepper. And then as a kid, we used to have, uh, garnish it with just a sprinkle of red wine vinegar. So if you want to try something different, just splash a little red wine vinegar on it and it's a real nice treat. And there is your egg white frittata with sun-dried tomatoes and asparagus. Healthy choice, high in protein. Uh, you're getting some nice uh, carotenoids from the sun-dried tomatoes, lutein. Getting great fiber from the asparagus as well as other B vitamins and magnesium and minerals from there. So let's go back to my salad and my hard-boiled egg. So my hard-boiled egg by itself can be, you know, a quick meal prep, a grab-and-go meal, all right? Easy. But let's say I want something a little more substantial. Well, I have my salad. I put my sun-dried tomatoes in it. Here's my go plate. So I can put this in my go plate. If I want to add other vegetables to it, I can. 
I mean, it's really pretty much an individual choice. We'll take our egg. I'm just going to slice it up. It'll make it just easier to eat. But if you notice, I'll give you a little look. Nice and yellow. Doesn't have that greenish tint. There's nothing wrong with the greenish tint. It's just that uh, visually, all right? And it's nice and yellow because I cooled it down as soon as I finished cooking it. Put that on the top. And there's your on-the-go meal, low calorie, low density, and you're good to go. You can dress it now, shake it up, or you can bring the dressing on the side. There's your go meal. Now, let's take a look at the custard and see how it's doing. That's right. Make it snappy. Get those oven mitts. Oh, man, is that gorgeous or what? So I'm just going to pull this right out. Oof, baby. Slide that in. Yeah, and just, that's just water. We'll take care of that later. Um, so there's the custard. Now, can you eat it warm? Yes, you can eat it warm. Uh, uh, or you can let it cool. It doesn't make a difference. However, Remember, we talked about we used coconut milk with this. I've got to keep these nearby so I don't lose them next time. Um, we used coconut milk, and coconut fat is uh, uh, a little uh, hard at room temperature. So right now, this is nice and soft and fluffy. However, if you were to chill it, the coconut fat is going to make it a little firmer, a little denser. So if you do chill it, Take it out, let it warm up a little bit to room temperature before you eat it, because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna have a, a little bit of a firm texture to it, and it's a custard. You like the soft, mellow texture to it. And if you wanna make it more interesting, because it's a little on the savory side, it's not very sweet. There's only two tablespoons of, of honey in there. That's not much at all. Um, then you can add some fresh fruit to it, um, or uh, berries. I'm going to put mango with it today. All right, just want to give it a chance to cool a little bit, but you just can scoop it out. You can also put fresh uh, shredded, rather, coconut in there. That's another good pairing with this. We put a little bit of that, and I'm going to make it a little sweet, so I'll put some mango right on top. Berries, like uh, blueberries, raspberries. Oh. Raspberries are to die for when you do it with raspberries. So we have a little bit of savory uh, coconut custard or, or egg custard with coconut milk and some uh, mango. Let's see how it tastes. You know, it doesn't need the mango. I mean, mango's nice. Who doesn't like mango? Well, some people don't, but mango's got that nice flavor and good texture. But I got news for you. The custard by itself is just great. It really is. Now think about it. What's in this custard? Egg whites, coconut milk, full coconut milk, full fat coconut milk, and some seasonings. A little bit of honey. This is a protein dense food. This is, if you cut back on the honey, or if you use like xylitol, a sugar substitute, this would be a great uh, ketogenic diet for somebody who's on a low carb diet, all right? It's good fats, it's a good amount of protein. Remember, about 40% of the protein in an egg is in the yolk. So we're getting plenty of protein here in a serving. So, because um, this is uh, five servings, we've got six yolks in here. All right, so you're getting some protein, you're getting good fats, it's a good choice. So remember, there's nothing wrong with eggs. In fact, sometimes in the office when people uh, are managing their cholesterol of them, I give them more fat to eat because then their body doesn't have to produce the cholesterol and it can just work on getting balanced, getting its health back. And again, 
What do we do in our office? We make sure your joints are moving right. We make sure your muscles are moving right. We make sure your nerves are working right. So your body moves better. And when you move better, you can do more of whatever it is you want to do. Chiropractic is drugless healthcare the way we practice it in our office. What can we do without medication, drugs, surgery to help you get to your health goals? That's how we look at it, all right? It, to us, it's kind of simple. But it's not what we treat, it's how we treat. And how we treat it is naturally. So, please consider your diet. Try some of these eggs dishes. And if you have any questions, call me, ask, all right? If you have any information or you want some information about NutriBio, I got it in the bottom on the video here so you can check them out. So, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, and I really appreciate you taking the time to be a member of our family in my kitchen. Have a great day.